From EPAWA Weather Consulting, headquartered in Worth Whitehall, Pennsylvania, this is Weather Weeklies, an informative video of the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the EPAWA coverage area. The thoughts and opinions expressed in this video are those of the forecaster alone and may not reflect those of the staff of EPAWA Weather Consulting LLC as a whole, nor its constituents. Now, without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Martrich with Weather Weeklies. Good Sunday morning to another edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, January 28th. We have a bunch of things to talk about here today, and the biggest takeaway from this video is going to be to not give up on the rest of winter because we have some exciting times ahead. And I'll show you that here in today's video. So first, uh, first and foremost is a look at today's system. Uh, this isn't a big deal unless you get up north of I-80. You can see the radar below me here. You can see some rain that uh, that was rain overnight changing to snow in those same areas. Generally north of I-80 for now, but during the afternoon that uh, will come a little bit closer to the I-80 corridor and give some minor accumulations in the fringe areas. But further south, probably, probably not too much. So uh, this is our snow map that is post all over social media. This is all on the weather alerts page as well. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I just wanted to show you where those accumulations are expected today now that it has changed over and will continue to do so through this afternoon. It's not going to be a major system, but those higher elevations especially will benefit from this particular system. For the south, it is just rain, and the majority of that rain has already fallen in a lot of these areas. And we'll just be more showery the rest of today. Uh, this area A and B, by the way, is fundamentally the same. It just allows for in B maybe a few flakes to, at the tail end to mix in. That's really not anything different from A. It's uh, still rain primarily. Okay, so that's the only thing we did there. The rest of it is all up here. So here's a long range here from Friday. And uh, we have a lot of uh, slightly above average periods here. And I do want to say that there's going to be a period within this first week of February that is going to be slightly below average, in fact. So I probably could have uh, broken it down a little bit better here in the most recent long range. But uh, there's been a trend in the last couple of days more toward a, to an omega blocking pattern. And that's going to set us up for right around, uh, you know, February 3rd, 4th, 5th. They're there about to be slightly below average for a couple of days. And we go right back to slightly above after that and remain that way through just before mid-month. And then I think we have a transition day on Valentine's Day itself. After that, we go back into a very uh, favorable pattern, probably the most favorable pattern of all of winter. In fact, I know we had that week to 10 day period there. We had some snow uh, in uh, mainly during the center around the second week of January. Uh, this is going to be a little bit better than that, I think. This is looking pretty good, um, and it has been for a long time. If you watch these Weather Weekly videos religiously, uh, we've been going over this pattern and, and how we expect this winter to play out. Even if we don't do seasonal stuff, I was still telling you about how you go longer longer into an El Nino winter, the better it gets, especially when you get to February and then you get into the Mecca pattern, so to speak. Uh, and that is still there. So lo and behold, everything that is uh, that was outlined at the beginning of the season is exactly how this is going to be end, end up going. Warm December, some snows chances in, in, uh, in January, but nothing epic. And then we get to February, then you have uh, a better chance at least at getting uh getting some some accumulating snow that is worth something it might even be a big system in there possibly we'll see here's what average snowfall is here for the month of january and february uh these are the numbers here for total in january and february is on the right as you can see you go up a little bit i think this is our snowiest month generally speaking over the entire area as as a composite average for the month of february so we do expect a busy month here in february we are projecting as you can see at least slightly above average snowfall. That might be even more than that. We'll see. I uh, don't want to get jumped, uh, put the heart, of, the uh, cart ahead of the horse just yet, but there is the opportunity for that. And uh, as here's we are where we are year to date. These are all red because we're behind normal year to date totals. The asterisks here next to a couple of these locations for the six locations shown, which is Philadelphia, Allentown, Harrisburg, and Atlantic City. These are our major climate sites across the region. All six of these are, but those four in particular have will finish the month of January with above average January snowfall. Not year to date because we're still behind slightly in some cases, and more so in others especially up here by the New York City area. Newark coming in at 3.1 for the year, and you should be up at 13.8 right now. So you're way behind here in Newark, but the rest of the region, uh, not too far behind, okay? Scranton's, uh, you might get some today, uh, maybe not much, but might get something. But as of now, as of the moment I'm recording this video on a Sunday morning, uh, you are behind in January snowfall as well by a few inches, not much, but a few. I did see some things on... 
uh, some mentions in, in, on Twitter that this uh, this chart that we did was wrong. Uh, for, specifically for the scranton Wilkesbury area, that is incorrect. This is the correct value for, for January. I know some people were putting out uh, some numbers for 8.6 being the average snowfall in the month of January. That is not correct. Not here. Uh, maybe through that date that they were talking about. I know the National Weather Service in Binghamton put a post up on Twitter, confused some people, thinking that they've already achieved uh, snowfall for January or above average snowfall, and that is incorrect. This is the actual number, and this is verified. I checked it. It's right. Okay, so quit coming at me with stuff saying that this is wrong. It's not wrong. Uh, this is the... Uh, background state of, of El Nino, we, we talked about how it was going to reach a peak at some point in January, and then it's going to start to tail off. That is happening, too. We're starting to see that slow decline of, of uh, the strength of El Nino. It is still largely central-based, not east-based, but we are starting to come down on those values. They're not quite as high anymore as they once were. So this is it's still a strong El Nino, but it's kind of start stepping away from that, heading more toward neutral as we get toward the end, very end of winter. Most likely when we get into March, it's probably going to be uh, strong up until that point. But we can see these values are coming down, and it is projected to continue to slowly come down as we get through time. And by the time we get to... This summer, it should be a neutral, uh, at least a neutral, if not heading toward negative at that point. Here's the June, July, August period is actually heading toward a La Nina uh, over the summer. So that is going to be a change from what we've had this year, of course, with a strong El Nino and probably going into at least early, the early projections where we might have a weak El Ni uh, La Nina next year for uh, winter. But that's a way down the road type thing. But we are going to be declining. That's the whole point here. Now, the Madden Julian Oscillation has been going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. These are all model-based projections, so I do expect that to continue to happen. But the general idea now has to move it quickly through. It moved through these warm phases rather quickly, right? Now you're getting to Phase 7. Now, I will say, uh, now this is, a, this is a warm phase in Phase 5. This is a warm phase, torch phase, whatever you want to call it, in Phase 6. Uh, we're now getting into Phase 7. Phase 7 is a uh, can-go-either-way type phase it's not it could be colder or warm depending on some uh, external factors and teleconnections so there will be some periods while it's in phase seven here over uh, between now and the, in the middle of february just before the middle of february that we will have some cooler periods mixed in there too so it's not gonna be just straight warm but we'll have some warm dominance in phase seven once it's there and then once you get to phase eight which they're all showing it doing now, coming into phase eight right here. Uh, that is a cold phase. That is a cold phase, and that is an ideal phase in February in a uh, in an El Nino. Uh, same thing here happening on the European extended, where you get in the cold phase here of phase eight, and then after that point, does it go into phase one or to go to the circle death? Doesn't really matter because once it's uh, where wherever the phase of the Madden Julian oscillation is prior to going into the circle will allow it to continue once it goes into the circle death when it doesn't have any effect on the pattern anymore. It still has the lingering effects of phase eight. If it's coming from that phase, that's good. Stay here as long as you want. It doesn't matter. If you're a snow lover, you're going to like this pattern coming up, and I think it's a pretty ideal pattern. And not just because models are telling me so, but, I mean, we've this is something we've projected for a long time now. I mean, way back in November, we were saying that we get to just wait. If it's backloaded... Uh, you have to be patient this year. I don't know how many times I said you have to be patient, and, and nobody wanted to be patient. We got a little taste of that in of snow in January. Some places, again, had greater than average January snowfall, four of our six climate sites, in fact, uh, but um, nothing huge. People still want that really big storm. Is that possible? Yes. Is that a guarantee? No. But we are going to be in a much more favorable pattern to have multiple chances at winter storm signals. And we had one identified, of course, in this past Friday's uh, long-range outlook that I'm going to maintain today. I still like it. So in the short term, we're going to be setting up with an omega blocking pattern. And this is not, I know it looks like a, like you got a face here with a guy frowning, which is which is cute, right? There's a there's a big frown, right? Uh, that is not the omega block. Uh, this is, uh, but it is not a great pattern for the, uh, central part of the U.S. where they're going to have some very warm temperatures relative to average. But the omega block pattern looks like this. this is, it looks like the Greek letter omega. Okay. So we are in the northeast United States. We're going to be on the cooler trophy side of this. And same thing here in the, in the Pacific Northwest. Cooler trophy side of this, uh, of the jet stream. And in the middle, you're going to have some very warm temperatures across the central uh, plains and, and, and uh, upper Midwest. So very warm temperatures there. Uh, while this is happening, this is going to set up the February 3rd, 4th, 5th time frame to be slightly below average while you have this trough coming into the northeast United States. And then this ridge is going to flatten out 
And when it does so, it's going to light, lead to slightly above average temperatures after that point once we get into much of the second week of February. And uh, the temperatures then result look like uh, look like this here's that cooler period that i talked about between the th like third and sixth or fifth or sixth and then you get some slightly above average temperatures coming back in this stops the the loop here stops at the evening of the 11th of february i do expect you're going to have a couple more days after that through the 13th where you're above average and then once we get to the 14th it's kind of a transition to colder behind it now this is what i was talking about i can show this graphic since i've been showing this graphic for for months Okay, back in November is when we first started showing it, that this is what it, uh, when you have a moderate, strong east-based or central base, it doesn't matter. Uh, these are all the El Ninos combined since 1876 to make like a composite forecast, okay? So this is what December looks like. December did look like this. We had some very warm temperatures uh, in, in December. That is, uh, obviously, everybody knows that. And January got a little bit better, marginally better here. Um, some episodes of blocking, which we had, and then we had a little bit of cold under, underneath, uh, cutting underneath at times to give us uh, some, some at least temperatures that aren't crazy warm anymore. They're slightly above average, and it'll finish that way very slightly above average for uh, temperatures in the month of January. But we, and we did have a few snow chances in there, just nothing epic just yet. But then you get to February, and there's the Mecca pattern. You got blocking, you got a um, nice ridging in the western United States. You got a cross polar flow going here, and you have cold underneath the block here, and some some an active storm track with that jet stream, keeping it cold not only colder than average, but also a snowier pattern. So this is what everybody was looking at, including myself, going back to November already saying, hey, we got to wait and be patient because down the line you're going to have an opportunity here. Well, there's the look for this for, for February, right? Now watch this. That's the European extended, and this is for the evening of the 16th of February. And it's the same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Okay, cold underneath the block here. And by the way, there's a huge winter storm signal right in here uh, for this time. And that is our st winter storm signal period between the 14th and 17th of February. That is the identified winter storm signal period that we placed in the long-range outlook on Friday. Uh, but in this setup here, as verbatim, uh, you have a west-based uh, NAO block, which is right here. Here's it sitting right over Baffin Island or Hudson Bay. This is a negative NAO right here, okay? So this is a west-based, uh, right, I'm, I'm not able to write very good with this uh, mouse, but there's negative NAO here. You got strong ridging here, a positive PNA, and you got, yes, a cross-polar flow bringing cold air down in underneath the block. So you have all this cold air here to deal with underneath the block. This is exactly what you'd want to see if you're a snow lover because you have a chance for not only a winter storm but maybe a bigger winter storm and i'm not saying that one particular will be but there's the opportunity at least as we get into not only this period but long beyond this okay uh so this is just uh you know like last time we had that, that second week of january we had that short couple two actually there was three systems that came in one was around the january 6th time frame uh, and we had another one a couple days later, another one a couple days after that, going culminating for the entire second week of of uh, January. Well, this one, that was, that was shorter-lived. This is not going to be short-lived this time. This is sustainable and for a very long time. What the NAO can do is if you have a blocking high over Greenland or near Greenland, the idea here is you allow, combined especially with that cross-polar flow I talked about with the EPO, uh, you can get a very cold air mass coming into the eastern half of the united states because of that uh that is what is set up in the negative phase of the of the uh north atlantic oscillation which is the your, your blocking that's just west of greenland in this case uh, also the cross polar flow brings in a lot of cold air for that too uh just because you have the here's your cross polar flow going straight across like this and it goes right down to the united states so that keeps us colder than average underneath that block okay this is has a very 2000 late 2010 ish vibe to me so when we're looking at so the feb like mid february to mid march period that year it was pretty epic this is kind of like that this kind of looks like that all right uh, i don't know if it's going to be to that level but man it's gonna this is something that lasts for a long time it looks like here's that same here's that same image i showed you before which is the ideal pattern for february in accordance with this right it's the same thing same thing we're going to move this forward all the way to March 11th. Watch this. We move this forward. Blocking stays there. You might not have the ridge the entire time. You still have that cross-polar flow. Look at all the cold that keeps underneath the block. These are all storms 
uh, possibly along the southern jet as this moves across. But this is a colder pattern uh, for that entire time. Look at the temperature period for that period once that moves in. Here's the colder temperatures coming in for the second half of February. And guess what? This goes right into March. This goes all the way through March, I'm sorry, March 12th, evening of March 12th, and it stays slightly below average for that entire time. So we're going to probably be busy, it looks like, from the middle of February to the middle of March with multiple chances at snowstorms. And uh, this isn't just me. You know I don't like to hype things, right? But this is I can't look at a pattern and get more excited if I'm a snow lover, if I'm looking at this here, than I am right now. I mean, this is, what, what more do you want? Okay, so you certainly have opportunities. Uh, opportunities doesn't necessarily translate to, again, big snows or snowstorms, but you're going to have multiple chances, not just one. There's going to be multiple chances, and we know that because we look at the uh, winter storm signals, which keep going up and up and up every single week that we do this. Uh, here's your first st storm signal, and I told you it was going to be like right in here. Well, there's your 14th to 17th period. Look what it does. There's your first signal coming in, right? And then beyond that, you have multiple signals. There's There's one here. There's one here. Uh, one here. There's multiple signals in the future as on, the, on this timeline going forward, okay? So there's multiple here that could get us some accumulating snow and perhaps significant accumulating snow. That is the setup for this. When you have a setup like that, uh, which is right here, you have this kind of setup. This is a setup for something that could produce in a big way. It doesn't mean it will, but it can, all right? So there's still hope. If I hear seen a lot, and this happens every year. Every year. I know some years that you, you people are wipe, waving the white flag. They're saying we're done with winter. Uh, or are we seriously only going to have one week of winter and that's it? Let's say, if so, just bring on spring. That's what, I'm, that's what the comments I'm seeing right now. You don't have to believe me. I don't care if you believe me or not. Don't care. Uh, I like this pattern. I think it's going to produce. Uh, as far as winter storm signals are concerned, we had identified three this year. We're three for three. Uh, I don't. If you follow the, lo the long range outlooks, these weather weeklies videos, uh, I don't blow smoke up anybody's rear end. That's not what I do. I don't hype things. Um, and I'm not saying we're definitely getting something huge in this time frame. But if I'm, if you hear me getting a little bit more animated about this period and more confident in this period, it's because it is a very good period. Okay, It's not because I'm just trying to strive. I'm not doing this for clicks. Who cares, right? So, uh, you know, we'll see where we go here in the next coming, the next upcoming few weeks. But it uh, looks like their target date is somewhere right around Valentine's Day for that change. And then going forward for the next month, it looks pretty good here as far as far as snow and cold is concerned, if that is something, in fact, you're looking forward to. And if you're one of those people that are not looking forward to it, you might want to take a vacation <laughs> during that time period. Uh, milder than average, for to summarize, milder than average, albeit slightly so, is likely to maintain midway through February week two. That might be closer to Valentine's Day like we have in our outlook, but uh, should stay uh Overall, slightly above average, except for, again, that short period where that Omega blocking pattern takes shape. So, yeah, that'd be like maybe February 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th time frame. The colder pattern settles in after we get to Valentine's Day or thereabout. And with blocking becoming established, it is sustainable. It is not something that's going to be sticking around for like a week or so, and then all of a sudden it's spring again. Uh, I think this sticks around for a long time, for look, looks, looking to be about a month or so that it's going to stick around. And that is just with a normal, natural El Nino paradigm, okay? That's what it does. That's what they do. We have backloaded winners, so this should not be a surprise. Snow chances increase after the second week of February, continue through at least early March. And winter storm signals may be multiple. So if you don't get something in that storm signal period identified, which is going to be tough, I, it's going to be tough to miss out on this one, I think, in that 14th to 17th time frame. That's between Valentine's Day and President's Day weekend. So, you know, uh, if you don't get something in there, there's multiple lining up, uh, multiple signals going all the way through at least the first week of March, if not the second. So we got some time yet. Um, no, I'm not worried about Sun Angle either. Don't worry about that. That's just uh, weenie talk. I'm EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Marchus. That is this edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, January 28th. Join us again next week. We'll take a look at these signals. We won't be in it yet. We're not going to be in that period yet where it's really ideal, but we can at least have a better look at uh, maybe a firm, more firm signal or two. Right now we just have one listed, but there could be two at that point that uh, would be introduced in next week's Long Range Outlook. Take care.